The story begins with a guy named Ronan. Ronan's life was meaningless and full of regrets. He was very exhausted. There were a lot of killed enemies around him. Ronan began to stand up, leaning on his sword. His clothes were very battle-worn and stained with blood. When this battle ended, Ronan cried very much. He could not believe that so many of his comrades died. Ronan looked at his dead comrades and blamed himself greatly for not protecting them. He heard a sound behind him and could not understand where this sound came from, because Ronan thought that no one was left alive. This was one of his enemies. He said that he could not believe that such a strong person existed. Ronan was shocked. He couldn't believe his eyes that anyone was still alive. His enemy, compared to a man, was very tall. Ronan climbed onto it and was ready to destroy it completely. The enemy's name was Great Gasp. He was one of the most important people who led the army. Twenty days ago, he revealed himself to the Empire and began to wreak havoc for no reason. He was the last of the three giants. Ronan stepped on his face and said that because of him the Empire turned into a cemetery. Ronan wanted him to die quickly. Ahayut said that this will not last long, and he will soon return to his world to take revenge. Ronan thought that this would be an excellent option, and he said that his dead friends were already waiting for him there. Ahayut could not understand what friends he was talking about. Ronan began to tell him that the two who came with him, one was fried by the big, hot-tempered red dragon using his fire, and the other is forever imprisoned by an old man named Larion. Larion sealed his enemies with powerful magic. Ronan began to smile and said that they had lost and were completely dead. Ahayut answered him, so that he does not hide the truth behind false words, the brave man. The star's children are connected to each other. Ahayut said that their opponents were also destroyed along with them, and none of them survived. It turns out that there are no more brave men like Ronan left. Ronan laughed and said that he was still alive, but they gasped that he would die soon. Ahayut told him not to get ahead of himself. After all, his end is very close. Ahayut admitted that he would even be glad if Ronan realized his abilities earlier and began to develop them. It would be a big obstacle in the way of enemies. Ronan did not react to his words in any way and said that he knew even without him that he had a very bad life. Ahayut admitted that it was an honor for him to fight against Ronan because he is a righteous man. He can be proud of this, but they gasp and say that in the end there will be one end and he can't change it. This world will disappear, swallowed up by starlight, and no one will have a choice to bow before this dark light. Ronan did not listen to him. He cut off his head with a sword. He looked at his enemy, and in the depths of his soul he remembered his words and realized that it could be true. Ronan was very exhausted and could hardly stand on his feet. He remembered his friends. Previously, they lived a carefree life and enjoyed life. But all his friends died in this battle. It was very painful for Ronan to remember how he saw his friend who was dying before his eyes. Ronan approached his comrades and observed this terrible picture, how all his friends lay on top of each other and were all killed. He could not understand what pride sent his friends to fight to the death. They thought that Ronan was very strong, and they were no worse. Ronan closed the eyes of his dead friend, and I say that he had to evaluate his chances and run away, and they fought until the very end. They fought against giants that could repel the strongest sword of the empire. Only Ronan's sword could defeat them. Tears flowed from his eyes. He blamed himself for the death of his friends, and he said that if he had known that he was usually a warrior, he would never have joined the front line, and no one would have died. Ronan knelt down and did not understand how he could continue to live after such losses. Suddenly he heard sounds again. He became interested in who was still alive. The main character understood what kind of person he was by his voice. Ronan believed that she died at the beginning of the battle. The guy started running towards her. He was very happy that she was alive. He ran up to her and smiled and said that she had survived. Ronan called her commander-in-chief. The girl's name was Adishan. When Ronan took a closer look at her, he noticed that her right arm was missing. Ronan came closer to her, and for the commander, she looked very unwell. Adishan said that Ron is a corporal, and he doesn't look any better. The girl changed her view and said that something else is important now. She asked Ronan about the enemy. The girl prayed that this monster would already die. Ronan told her not to worry too much and said that he destroyed him and cut off his head. The pipe is lying nearby. The girl began to cry and thanked Ronan for saving the world. The guy thought that the girl was very grateful to him, so he decided to ask a request from the Adishans. Ronan began to talk about burying fallen soldiers. According to the regulations, the body is either left or burned. He asked her to treat them appropriately this time. 
Adishan said that she was not sure because Ronan looked better than her. The girl asked him to take care of this personally. Ronan was surprised by this question because he had never burned the corpses of people. Blood started coming out of his mouth. He looked at his left hand and saw that it was completely covered in blood. Ronan did not think that he looked any more alive. The guy said that he could die at any second. After all, his body is completely exhausted and there are a lot of wounds. Ronan said that most of the time he simply suffered from nonsense, so he did not manage to do much. And that's why his death looks extremely dishonest. Adishan asked if he survives what he wants to do in the future. Ronan smiled and said that the list of things to do is simply huge, and you can't just remember them. Ronan looked at the sky, saying that right now only one thought comes to mind. He wondered what it was like to study at the academy. The girl could not understand what he meant. Ronan recalled the words of his enemy and admitted that his words hurt him very much. Although for Ronan, his sister's last wish was more important. It was to send Ronan to the academy. Ronan realized that he was weakening with every second. He began to think about reuniting with his family. Adishan shouted that he should not make hasty conclusions, because when the rain stops, the search party will go to look for them. Ronan said that it didn't matter anymore because his song was done. He didn't understand why she was so stubbornly trying to say meaningless things. At one point, the rain simply stopped. It was very unexpected because it was raining very heavily. Ronan and Adishan were shocked that the rain stopped so abruptly. A very strong earthquake began. The earthquake was so strong that the earth began to break. Ronan became very interested in what was happening now. He understood that these were definitely not weather conditions. These were their enemies. These monsters had eight wings. There were tens of thousands of them. They were going to destroy the planet completely. Ronan was very shocked. He couldn't understand where they all came from. Adishan couldn't believe her eyes because nothing ended with those three giants. The girl was very disappointed in herself that she could not save this world. Ronan started yelling at her. He couldn't stand people who give up without a fight. Ronan shouted for her to pull herself together. He asked her to use telekinesis or something similar and threw him up. Ronan said that he couldn't reach them with his equipment because they were too far away. The girl thought he was crazy because he was going to kill them all. The commander-in-chief asked Ronan if he really wanted to fight even in such a situation. The guy answered without hesitation that, of course. Ronan took out his sword and said if he dies, he will take these monsters with him to the next world. The girl was very surprised. She didn't understand how he didn't give up in such conditions. She looked at him and realized that he was such a person. That's why thanks to Ronan they were able to get so far. Adishan looked at him from the side and considered that he was the chosen one. The girl took him by the shoulder. She said that she needed to say something important. Adishan kissed him. Ronan's eyes were open because he was shocked by her behavior. Blue energy entered Ronan's mouth. He felt unusual sensations after that. The guy asked what she put in his mouth. He thought that Adishan had gone crazy. Adishan approached him and began to whisper words in his ear. Ronan couldn't understand what she was saying. He asked her what she meant. The girl took him by the shoulder. The guy asked her again what kind of nonsense she was talking about in such a situation. Adishan smiled and said that if they meet again, let him make sure that she doesn't do anything stupid and becomes a simple seamstress. Ronan looked at her and realized that she was dying. Her strength was running out. The girl smiled and said that she had tried so many things but never achieved success. There was a big explosion. From this explosion, there was a big flash. Ronan changed his location. He was wide-eyed and couldn't understand what had happened. He started looking for Adishan. At first, it seemed to him that he just dreamed it. When the guy looked in different directions, he realized that he was in his hometown, Nimbutan. He went back in time. He sat under a tree, held his head, and could not believe that the words of the commander-in-chief turned out to be true. Ronan began to remember the situation when Adishan kissed him. She said that Ronan swallowed an orb that allowed him to turn back time. It was from this sphere that the girl was a simple seamstress, and she was able to achieve the rank of commander-in-chief. In total, the sphere allows you to return to the past four times. Because of this sphere, the future can be changed. The girl has used this sphere three times already. There is only one chance left. Adishan then said that she was giving this sphere to Ronan. This is the power to destroy giants. The girl hugged him and said that she was very sure that it was Ronan who was the key to saving this world. When the girl whispered in his ear, she said that he would have to hone his skills to perfection. Adishan was very glad that his desire was similar to her goals. Ronan mentioned that he said that he wanted to enter the academy. Adishan decided to fulfill his dream. Ronan decided to get ready to study. 
then he should head to Filion Academy. There are many outstanding people in this academy. The girl was sure that this would help him. Ronan remembered the girl's last request, that she asked her to become a seamstress and not do anything stupid. The guy started banging his head against a tree. He wanted it to be just a dream. Passersby thought he was crazy. Ronan thought that even if this was reality, he could end up in the past. He didn't understand what he could do alone. Ronan again remembered that he had gone back in time, and many of his acquaintances were alive. He started running to his older sister. Ronan really wanted to see her. I hugged my sister. While jogging, he thought that he had really returned to the past, and it will go much further and become even stronger than in the past. He noticed that there was a big punk near one tree. They were all making fun of the poor guy. He considered them to be complete freaks, because why did they hang an ordinary child upside down? Ronan recalled that these guys were exactly the same in the past. They were complete bullies. When Ronan took a closer look at the guy, he noticed that it was not a rope that was holding him, but magic. It was difficult to see such a complete person even on the battlefield. The guy couldn't believe that there was such a thing here in a provincial town. Ronan said that everything was correct, and around this time they were all here. They were here too. The girl also watched this from the side. She wanted them to quickly stop this humiliation. After all, at this rate, something bad could happen to this child. The guy cried and asked them to stop. He said that he really had no money. He shouted that the medicine for mom this month was very expensive and he spent all the money. The bully says that he is emptying his pockets. He is not interested in the health of his mother. The bully swung his hand and shouted that he would never be a good son. Because if he wants to be a good son, he should have earned more money. The bully turned to the girl. She was holding the guy on the tree with the help of magic. The bully said that this idiot still didn't understand who he was dealing with. And he asked the girl to lift him higher. The girl said that she couldn't do this, because if she lifts it higher, she might drop it. The bully laughed. He didn't understand why the girl was shaking so much, because he didn't consider her a girl. The bully told the girl to shut her mouth, and she lifted him higher. The girl's name was Ashel. The bully threatened her that if she didn't do this, she would hang instead of this guy. Ashel was very scared. She recalled how it all came to this. The girl regretted that she had started learning magic in vain. Ashel showed all her fellow villagers what she was capable of. She wanted to prove to everyone that she was also capable of something. The girl understood that she had to tell them that she could no longer lift this guy higher. But she was very scared. There were tears in her eyes. She was afraid that the hooligans would beat her. But the girl had enough courage. She shouted to the bully to stop doing this immediately. At that moment, Ronan appeared. He hit Ashley on the head with a stick. He said that she should stop because this guy will die. The bully called Ronan scum and asked what he was doing now. The bully started shouting at the Ashel that he had let this guy go. Ashel said that it happened by accident and that it wouldn't happen again. Ronan asked the Achul to score on this scum. Ronan said that he needed to discuss something with Achul. There was a bully behind him and he kept calling him an asshole. Ronan did not pay attention to him and asked Ashul where he learned telekinas magic. Ashel replied that he learned this magic from a grimoire bought from a peddler. Ronan was surprised that it was so good even from a cheap book. The guy said it was simply amazing. He just wanted to watch this magic. But with him, I will meet the giants. The bully was furious that Ronan was not paying attention to him. He took out his sword to fight him. Ronan immediately realized what that sound was. He was ready for this fight. It was the sound of the ball. Ronan looked at the guy who had a lot of hatred. The bully did not understand how he could ignore him. After all, it seems that after he gave in to Ronan, he became pretty insolent. The bully attacked Ronan and shouted that today he would teach him good manners. During the attack, Ronan noticed that he had a very long sword. He wondered where this scum found such a good sword. Ronan looked at the hooligan's attacks and immediately said that his attack was simply terrible. But usually bare strength is enough for him. But this was not their case. Ronan easily dodged his attack. The bully was simply furious that he avoided it so easily. While dodging, Ronan realized that although his body was younger, the rest had not changed. His strength remained the same. His battle senses, instincts, and reactions remained high. The bully smiled and said that good luck was on his side. He wanted to leave Ronan crippled, unable to even lift a spoon for the rest of his life. Ronan said that today, he really was extremely lucky, especially considering the lack of luck in the guy's life. The bully didn't want to stop there and shouted for Ronan to fall to his knees and beg him for mercy. In this case, the bully promised to let him live. 
although you will have to say goodbye to one hand. Ronan was not at all afraid of this hooligan. He began to joke about the hooligan that he was very scared. The bully says he will finish him off and take good care of his sister. Ronan got very angry and decided to ask again, did he really say about his sister? The bully started laughing and said that every time he sees her, he thinks about it. Her ass is so round it will feel good. Ronan became very angry with the bully after such words and decided to attack him. Ronan did not kill him, but decided to cut off his right ear for such insolence. The bully began to scream in pain. A lot of blood flowed because he did not have a whole ear. The other guys looked at their friend. They were very scared. After all, this was the first time for them. Ronan came closer to this hooligan and asked him with a wild face if he wanted to die. His friends could not understand how this was possible because he cut off his ear with a very fast attack. But that was not all. He cut off his ear with a simple wooden stick. Ronan turned to them and asked them if they were enjoying such a spectacle. Ronan kicked this bully and told his friends to take this freak and run away from here if they value their ears. Ronan ordered them to leave the stolen money, along with payment for his ruined mood. The hooligans promised that they would return all the money and begged for mercy so that he would not touch them. Ronan approached the guy they were offending and gave him all the stolen money. The guy was shocked. After all, no one had treated him so well before. He decided to ask if he really wanted to leave all this to him. After all, there is much more money here than they took. Ronan told him not to worry and that everything was fine. After all, this sword is enough for him. Ronan said that the guy shouldn't worry. These hooligans won't come at him again. They don't have the guts to be there. The guy burst into tears and thanked Ronan for such kindness. Ronan waved his hand and told the guy not to think about it. He can simply go home. Ashel approached them. Despite his appearance, he was a guy. It was clear from him that he was very ashamed. He bowed and asked for forgiveness for such behavior. He was very sorry. Ashley began to explain that he understood that he shouldn't have done that, even under the threats of this bully. The bully's name was Hans. Ashley burst into tears and said that he was very scared, that I couldn't object to him. Ashel said that it was all his fault and he was really very sorry for such a vile act. The guy didn't know what to answer at first. The guy remembered that Ashley roared in the same way when Hans first brought you here. When he first saw the Aculean, he realized how similar their fate was. He took the Ashel by the shoulder and asked him not to reproach himself too much because he had no other choice. The guy smiled and said that it was not your fault. It was clear from his face what a bright person he was. The guy was very pleased that Achel apologized. This means that Achel really understands his guilt. They began to say goodbye to this guy because he had to buy medicine for his mother. Ronan looked at the Achel with an unusual look and thought that he was not so bad. Ronan reminded Ashel that he wanted to talk to him about important things. Ashel forgot about it, but acted as if he remembered everything. Ronan began to leave. He said that they would see each other at this place in four days. Ashley was surprised and did not understand. Why wait another four days if this issue can be resolved right now? Ashel asked what he meant. Ronan waved his hand and said that he was busy right now, so they would meet later. As soon as the moon rises in the night sky, Ronan decided to intimidate him. He said if the caller came, then the same thing will happen to Hans. It's clear that Ronan was joking, but Akel took this conversation seriously. Ronan ran about his business and warned that if he was late, it would be worse for him. Ronan approached the cozy house. His sister lived in this house. He remembered that she loved flowers, but I thought it was a bit overkill. Ronan remembers that she loved flowers, so he decided to tear off everything that caught his eye. Ronan turned around. He decided to throw away these flowers. At that moment, his sister opened the door. She said that she was wondering who was making so much noise outside. The guy was afraid to turn to his sister. After all, he hadn't seen her for so long. When Ronan turned, he recalled that during his military service, he solved thousands. What can I say when they see each other again? It's worth apologizing for leaving without saying goodbye. Or tell me how much I missed my sister. Ronan was just thinking about it. Well, all these words would belong exclusively to Ronan the soldier. He looked at his sister and couldn't think of anything to say to her. The sister smiled and said that he was early today. She prepared a lot of goodies for her brother. She knew how hungry he was coming home. In her life, she would never have thought that the day would come. When her cold brother gives her a bouquet, she really liked the flowers. It was Ronan's older sister, Urel. Urel shouted that she was very happy with such a gift. Ronan replied that he was very glad that she liked the flowers very much. 
Ronan did not expect that she would have such a good reaction. Ronan decided to ask Irel how old she is turning this year. Irel was surprised by this question. She replied that she would be turning 22 this year. Irel got up from the table and thought that her younger brother had a headache, that he was asking such questions. Ronan understood if she turned out to be, there are about 10 years left before the invasion of these creatures. Iron put her hand on Ronan's forehead to check his temperature. The girl began to worry and said that it didn't look like he had a fever. Ronan thought that his sister was exactly the same as he remembered her, still bright and kind. Because of his sister, Ronan wanted this time to last forever. Ronan understood that this would not last long, and after ten years he needs to protect his sister and this world. He removed his sister's hand. He said that he needed to tell her something important. Irene became interested in what her younger brother wanted to tell her. Ronan smiled and said that he was thinking of entering the academy. He recalled that it was his sister's dream. Iron was beaming with happiness because she had long been trying to persuade her brother to enter the academy. She asked him to repeat whether she heard everything correctly. Ronan replied that everything was correct. The sister was shocked because he never wanted to hear about it. Out of happiness, Iron began to look for things. She knew that this day would come. Irene believed that her brother was very smart. She was sure that he would become the best in everything. Ronan thanked his sister for such kind words. They both looked into the large cauldron. The girl said that she had prepared a big surprise. Ronan was very surprised. He saw a lot of money. My sister said that she was secretly putting it off to surprise her little brother. Iron put it off in case he decided to enter the academy. She wanted to ensure that he had a chance to enter the academy. Ronan said that his sister was simply amazing and asked how she managed to save so much money. Ronan told his sister to use the money herself. After all, this is not enough. The girl didn't understand him and asked what he was talking about. Iron said that there is a lot of money here. She didn't know where exactly he was going to enroll. Ronan replied that he was going to go to the Imperial Philian Academy. This academy was considered one of the most prestigious academies in the world. From what she heard, Iron began to scream throughout the whole house. She would never have thought that her brother would be so passionate about studying. Imperial Philian Academy, the best educational institution in the empire. The most outstanding teachers from all over the continent. They were famous for their studies. Together with the funding, the sending names created a place that provides unparalleled education. So prestigious that it is called the Workshop of Heroes. It has an extremely high status. Commander-in-Chief Addison, Swordmaster Shulifan, Worst Villain, Winter Witch, and many others. Academy graduates were very useful during the war. So much so that the commander-in-chief's advice was more than logical. Well, with such a high entry threshold and insane prices, her popularity is becoming a problem. Ronan, yes, it seems to his sister that he can do more. He didn't want her to be disappointed in him. Four days passed. Ronan met with Akul. Ronan didn't think he would come Michelle. The guy said that he is not a Mashal. His name is Ashel. Ashel remembered Ronan's words. He will not leave until Akel comes. Ronan smiled and told him to forget about these words. Ronan took a large backpack with him. He said that they would be very busy that night. After all, there is something that Ronan wants to check. Ashel was scared, and he asked why he decided everything so quickly. Ronan replied that everything was fine and there was nothing special there. Ronan pointed a finger at himself and asked the Ahel to use the telekinaz on him. Ronan asked him to lift it to the highest height he could. Ronan was in anticipation. Ashel was shocked. He didn't understand why he would use this magic in the middle of the night. Ashel began to worry. He was wondering why he would do something so dangerous. Ronan didn't think it was very dangerous. He asked the Ahel to do everything as he said. Ronan asked him not to be afraid because all this would be safe. Ahel agreed he decided to use telekinesis. Ashel began to use telekinesis. His magic was blue. Ronan began to rise up. He was shocked because it exceeded all his expectations. Let it not yet be so high and stable. But this feeling was extremely similar. During the battle with Gasp, it was telekinesis that allowed Ronan to fight this monster. Telekinesis was a very rare skill, among magicians who themselves are rare. Ronan already understood that he would become the most important part of the future battle with Ahayut. The beginning. It worked out very well. Achel said that it was harder for him to hold. It became more and more difficult with every second. Achel asked Ronan to let him go. Ronan told Akel to hold on a little longer. It remains only to check a few things. Ronan replied that he would come down later himself. Ashel could not understand in what sense he would come down himself. 
After all, the height was very high. Ronan took the sword and cut off the flow of a Kel mana. Ronan easily descended from such a height onto two legs. Ashley was shocked that Ronan cut off the flow of mana so easily. Ashel asked what he just did. Ronan replied that this was nonsense, just a little acrobatics. Ronan didn't tell him the whole truth. Akel realized that Ronan was talking complete nonsense. He asked what kind of acrobatics he was talking about. It was the first time Akel had seen him grow a stream so easily. Ronan hit him on the head and told him to just forget about it, because he himself didn't understand how it worked. And clarification of the nature of this ability. Only one of the tasks in Ronan's homework assignment. The reason Ronan's blade worked on him. Surely it's her. Ronan began to collect his things. He said that we need to think about this slowly right now. Ronan started to leave and said that he had something to take care of. In any case, he believed that the Aculean passed its test. Ronan threw him a backpack and told him to follow him. After all, they still had things to do before the moon set. Ronan pointed her finger at herself and said that it would be legendary. This will be the first page of Ronan's biography in the Empire's greatest history book. Ronan told Ashley about the Philian Academy. Ashel asked if he had heard correctly. They went to the Philian Academy, where the entire elite of the Empire study. Ronan replied that everything was correct, and there was no need to ask again a hundred times. This irritated him greatly. Ronan asked Ashley if he really didn't want to go there. Ashel replied that that was not the case. Ashel was a little embarrassed. He said that Ronan had good martial arts. It was normal for him. Akel thought that he could not do anything. He considered himself a loser. Ronan realized that Akel has poor self-esteem. He asked the Ashel if he planned to continue living like this. Having innate talent? Spend it on entertaining dregs and hooligans? This is truly a life that no one wants. Ronan agreed that he has various bad traits. Akel is timid and cowardly. And also a crybaby, shedding tears for no reason or reason and a loser who is afraid of everything. Ronan said that this is normal, because now the Aculean can change. Ronan turned to Ashel. He said that we must value time because lost time can never be made up. And one day the Ashel will regret this. If he continues to consider himself a failure and does not go towards difficulties. Ronan thought about his own words. He thought that he was talking about himself from a past life. Ronan took a kel by the shoulder and asked whether he excused his opinion after Ronan's words. Ashel grabbed his face. He was very pleased that Ronan was so worried about him. Ronan replied that his life was his, and he would not force him. So Akel can come back if he wants. Ronan began to leave. Ashel shouted at him to stop because he also wanted to change. He told Ronan that he was going with him to Fillion. Akel asked him to teach him everything that an Akel should have. Ronan smiled slyly because his words went into Akel's soul. Ronan turned to him. He said that the Akulian had shown courage for the first time. Ronan said that his first test for the great Akulian daredevil was beginning. Ashel confidently said that he was ready to give it his all. Ronan turned and slyly said that everything happened as he had planned. They walked for a long time. On the way, they saw a fire. Ashel asked if this was my first test. Ronan replied that this was his test, the best opponent he could find, to test Akulian skills. It was the Moon Goblin. At this time he was sleeping. Ronan said that there are a lot of them there. Well, in a word, this was their leader. Ronan took Ashley by the shoulder and asked how he could do such an easy task. Ashley was very scared. Ronan said that now it was time for them to start. He was interested in how the Akul would act. They both looked from behind the bushes at the moon goblin. This is a type of goblin often found in these lands. Most people distinguish them from ordinary goblins by yellow skin and disfigured body. But the truly unique feature is the lunar ones. There was their mad love for gold and other treasures. They were all crazy about gold. They often ambush merchants for the purpose of robbery. Goblins collect everything valuable in one place, and they have a celebration. They raise all the stolen gold to their tower and begin to dance around this gold. All this gold falls on a full moon like today. Achelle realized that they were here to take this gold. Ronan said that he was absolutely right. Ronan began to smile and said that today they would completely rob them. Ashel said that this is the first time he has heard about this. Goblins who collect valuables and celebrate. Ashel wondered how Ronan found out about this. Ronan replied that he had his own sources. Ronan understood that he could not tell that in a past life he accidentally stumbled upon them. Ronan approached the Akel and said that in any case, he just needed to transfer all their treasure into this bag with telekinesis while they were sleeping. 
Ronan was sure that it would be very easy. Ashel said that it didn't sound so easy, because if there was even one mistake, he would wake them up. Ronan began to scare the Akul. If he made a mistake, they would be in complete trouble. Ashel began to panic. He shouted that it was too dangerous, and he needed to think about everything. Ronan said that he was really a coward. Ronan reassured the Achul and said that in order to enter the Filion, you need two things. First of all, money. The cost of training there is simply exorbitant. Secondly, real experience. Funds are a problem, but experience is more important. Ronan believed that the Aculean town was filled with aristocrats who had received the best education since childhood. If Ashley wants to get around them, then there will be only one way. Ashley continued to shake with fear. Ronan continued to scare the Achel. He said that this would only be possible by risking his life. These guys are perfect opponents. After all, at the same time, they will give money and gain experience. Two birds with one stone. Ashel understood that he had no choice. He will have to do all this for the sake of his dream and to prove to everyone that he is not a weakling. Ronan hit Akel on the back and said that he could start right from this second. Some time passed and the Achil collected quite a lot of gold. Ronan supported the Akulian all this time. He said that he would succeed and there was just a little bit left. Akel looked like a balloon with fear, but he succeeded. Ronan looked at the gold and said that it was the second bag. The two large bags were both filled with a large amount of gold. Ronan began to stroke the Achel. He continued to say that the experience was great and it would be useful to him in the future. Ronan wasn't entirely sure that Akel would cope, but in fact, the Akulian got involved very quickly. Ronan continued to look at Akel and admitted that he was much better than anyone thought. Achel was very happy for himself, first of all, that he had proven to himself that he could do anything if he believed in it. But on the other hand, Ronan found a really valuable pawn. This ability will be very useful in the future. Ronan began to close the bags. He said that the bags were filled to the brim. We must move on. At this point, they had nothing else to do. It was time for them to leave. After all, the goblins could wake up at any moment, and there would be a lot of noise. At that moment, two hunters were chasing the bird, and they made a lot of noise. Ronan didn't understand what kind of moron would make such a noise in the forest in the middle of the night. Because of this noise, the goblin commander woke up. He looked at the gold and saw that the chest was completely empty. All the goblins woke up. They began to call thieves who stole this gold. On the one hand, the goblins themselves stole this gold. Ronan and Akel wanted to leave quietly, but the goblins at that moment turned towards them and noticed them. The goblins immediately noticed them and attacked them with great speed. Ronan said that he knew so. Everything was going too smoothly. Ashel was shocked. He suggested throwing his bags and running away to save his lives. Ronan replied that he would never leave here. After all, if they run away, then in this case, they will not pay for entry into the academy. It's impossible to earn that much. Ashel shouted that they were finished. After all, they were coming closer and closer. At this time, Ronan looked at his sword. He began to evaluate it. It was a long sword made of cheap steel with such weight and hardness. Ronan estimated that such a sword would withstand about 15 attacks. He looked at the goblin and said that there were about 30 of them there. The forces were uneven. Ronan said that 15 attacks would be enough for him. He began to destroy these monsters very easily. Goblin heads flew in different directions. There was a lot of blood. Ashel watched this spectacle and was shocked. He didn't think Ronan was so strong. Ronan destroyed a lot of monsters. He said that there are still 14 attacks left. Ronan destroyed all the monsters. He thought that he had managed to deal with them quite well. Ashel looked at it from the outside and thought it was incredible. He couldn't believe his eyes. After the shock, he didn't speak for another ten minutes. He beheaded three goblins with one blow. And then, in front of the rest of the crowd, Ronan just disappeared. Thanks to his speed, he cut these monsters in twenty seconds. And in the blink of an eye, he appeared again. Eichel admitted that it was an amazing sight for the eyes. Ronan asked Ashley why he froze in one place. Are you really planning to continue to idle? Ashel asked for forgiveness and said that he did not know what to do. Ronan smiled and said that he had no need to apologize. He asked Akel to pack his things, and they would leave quickly. Ronan said that they were returning home. Ronan began to warm up and said that it was very tiring because he thought that the walk would be easy. But he overestimated his strength. Ronan couldn't believe that his muscles were aching after the usual slicing of a bunch of pathetic goblins. This is all because Ronan is still growing. Ronan promised himself how to return home. He will actively engage in physical training. 
Ashel asked Ronan what kind of sound happened in the forest in the middle of the night. Ronan replied that he had no idea. Ronan was very angry with those guys who were yelling in the middle of the night in the forest. He considered them bad people, and he promised that they would answer to him for this act. At that moment, these people who were making noise were aiming an arrow at the Achul. Ashel heard an incomprehensible sound. He decided to turn around and see what it was. When he turned around, he saw an arrow in front of him that was close to kill him. But thanks to Ronan's reaction, he managed to intercept this arrow. In what way did he save the life of an Akel? Ashel did not understand where she flew out from so unexpectedly. Ronan began to say that this forest was cursed. He didn't understand why there were so many morons hanging around in this forest. These were ordinary hunters. They considered them to be monsters, and therefore shot an arrow. Ronan was very angry that these were children, because he wanted to teach them a lesson for such behavior. The hunters came closer to them and asked forgiveness for such behavior. The guy said that something rustled in the distance, and he decided that it was a monster. The hunters were shocked, because a little more and they would have killed the person. Ronan replied that all their words are complete lies. After all, they don't even hide their greedy glances. Ronan shouted that they should stop clowning, and they answered okay. Ronan asked them with a cold look who they were. The hunter smiled and said that he missed it. He forgot to introduce himself properly. He took out the sword and attacked Ronan. He shouted that they were Calaboros. Ronan easily blocked his blow and struck back. Ronan's blow caused the guy to bleed from behind his mouth. After everything, when Ronan knocked the guy out, he was attacked by his partner with insults. The blonde was about to attack Randy, but at that moment, Akel used his telekinese technique. Blondie didn't understand what was happening to her, because he simply couldn't move. Ronan turned to Achul and said that it was simply incredible. Ronan took his opponent's blade and cut it into small pieces. Ashel looked at this spectacle. He was scared because there was a lot of blood. Ashel asked with fear if he was dead. Ronan answered yes. He didn't understand why we should feel sorry for him, the one who tried to kill us. Ronan recalled that the guy from Calibro Achul asked what it was. It was the first time he had heard this word. Ronan began to explain to him that this was poaching, kidnapping, human trafficking, an organization that commits all possible crimes. This is the most brutal criminal group in the empire. Ronan said Ashul, without him they would have already cut out all his organs, and the man himself would have been buried somewhere on the sly. Ronan believed that letting them go, I know the truth, how they kill people is complete imbecility. Ronan advised the Achul to ask fewer questions because they still had a long way to go. The other bag starts to move. Ronan couldn't figure out what kind of bag it was. And why is he moving? Achel replied that these poachers brought him with them. Ashel thought that it was a captured animal. Ronan replied that it was possible. When Ronan opened the bag a little, he saw blue eyes looking at him. Ronan opened the bag completely, and the chick flew out. They both looked at this chick. Ronan said that it was a very strange chick. He has blue feathers. His face is very much changed and does not look like an ordinary chick. Achel tells Ronan with surprise that this is the first time he has seen a blue bird. Ronan admitted that he also saw this for the first time. Ronan took a closer look and saw an unusual chain that was holding this chick back. These were Calaboro hunting shackles. They disrupt the flow of the victim's mana and complicate movements. Ronan thought about it. It seemed to him that they were used on special occasions or when catching unique creatures. There was a connection through the bird. He said that it finally connected. Ashel was very frightened because he thought that the bird had spoken. Out of fear, he went to hug Ronan. Ronan called him an idiot. He said that this was the magic of communication. Ronan thought since she spoke as soon as she got out of the bag. Apparently, he himself is capable of blocking mana. Ronan turned to him. He said that this was the owner of the bird. The owner replied that everything was so. His name was Varen, and at the moment he is studying fantastic beasts. This bird, Marpez, is under his protection. No matter how much the owner tried, the connection did not work. He already thought about reporting this, but at one point, everything worked. The owner asked for forgiveness for being rude, asked who they were. Ronan replied that they were virtuous travelers. Ronan began to tell the story that they met with poachers, who stole the bird. Well, then the memories were too bloody. Ronan did not remember them. The owner was surprised that this bird was stolen by poachers. Ronan replied that everything was so, and they saved this bird. The owner said that he thought about it. Well, he didn't even imagine that something like this would actually happen. The owner replied that he owed them a huge debt, 
The owner was not sure that he had enough money to pay them for this help. Ahel smiled affectionately. I replied that he might not even think about it. More important is how to return this bird to him. After all, this bird looks very tired after captivity. Ronan asked the owner of the bird if he took off such a bird. It would be able to fly normally. The owner replied that it seemed like yes. Dream birds have an amazing home instinct. So if they can free it, it will be very good for the bird. Ronan replied that this is very good. With the help of his ball, he cut these acovs with one swing. Ronan ordered the bird to go to its owner because very difficult weather would soon begin. Ronan asked the bird not to make its owner worry. The bird's gaze showed how grateful it was for the rescue. The bird turned its back to Ronan. The bird stood in one place. Ronan couldn't figure out how to react, and right now he's sticking his ass right in his face. The owner said that the bird asks to pull out the feather before it flies away. Apparently one day this bird wants to meet again. The casino continued to say that after extracting the feather of the dream bird, allows you to find out the direction to it, like a compass. Ronan pulled out the feather. The owner said that if they visit his establishment later, please stop by and see Marpeza and me. Ronan was shocked. What a fast bird. Akel noticed that Ronan's hand had changed. He asked what was in his hand. Ronan looked at it. They both wondered what it was. A few days later, it was an ordinary bright day. The man examined the expensive stone. He said that it was a craftsmanship. He was very pleased. He said that this was simply an amazing thing. And he was ready to give 20 gold coins for it. This was the owner of the Carabel Trading Company. His full name was Duan Corabel. He began to think and said that everything they brought was worth a lot of money. He believed that he was clearly having a good day. Ronan smiled and said that he was happy to help such an important client. Ronan smiled. He was pleased that at least someone realized this. Ronan said that the rest of the traders are just scammers. After all, they offered only five gold pieces for such an expensive thing. This really infuriated him. Ronan shook the merchant's hand and said that he was very happy that he had found such a decent merchant. The merchant smiled. He was very pleased that such praise was coming his way. Ronan took his pocket and offered to bargain for the price of one more thing. He took out an egg. Ronan said that it was not for sale. Well, he was just curious to know what it was. That night, so the blue bird of dreams left him such an egg as a farewell. This egg looked very beautiful. This egg was different from other eggs. It looked special. At first, Ronan thought that the bird had shit in his hand. But he was wrong. Ronan began checking the egg for safety. You can return this egg to the stone as a test. It was very hard on the egg. The stone broke, but the egg remained completely intact. Ronan made a couple of dozen more throws. He found out that this was a very strong thing. They were both shocked by the strength of this egg. The merchant began to look at it very carefully and could not understand what it was. The merchant said that this item was created by a rare, fantastic creature. It's probably worth a lot of money. The merchant returned this egg to Ronan. He asked for forgiveness and said that he did not know what it was, but he thought that this object was very unusual. The merchant suggested that Ronan should give this item to a professional who would understand what it is. Ronan sighed loudly. You said it was worth a try. He can't sell it now because he is very interested in finding out what it is. Akel suggested that it was hardened droppings. Ronan finally decided to ask the merchant if he sells books about Fillion. The merchant decided to clarify the question and asked again about the Academy's Fillion. Ronan replied that yes, because they were planning to take the entrance exams, but they don't know much about the Academy. Trade realized that they were from the incoming ones. It was a lucky coincidence for them. Trade said that his daughter also plans to create entrance to the Academy. He was sure that his daughter could help them. Just at that moment, his daughter came. She asked her dad what was happening. The girl asked who they were. The merchant replied, here is his daughter. This was his only child. The girl's name was Maria. The merchant told his daughter to say hello. These are important people with whom they have just made a lucrative deal. Mary called them children. The father called his daughter shameless and told her to watch her language. The merchant asked for forgiveness for his daughter because she grew up in our company so she can be rude. Ashel said that everything is fine and he has nothing to worry about. Ronan approached Maria and she asked if she really was Maria. The girl was surprised by this question. Ronan clarified that she is Maria, which she uses as her middle name. The girl replied that yes, well, how does he know all this? Ronan said that it was really strange, but she was very similar to his friend. On a man whom Ronan knew, 
Ronan remembered his old acquaintance. Ronan told Marina that he had one more question and asked her to come closer. The girl asked him what he wanted to ask. Ronan began to whisper in her ear. He asked if she had something downstairs. Ronan said more precisely if she has a male sexual organ below. The girl's face showed how surprised she was by such a question. Maria was shocked by this question. He couldn't understand what kind of bullshit this guy was talking about. Ronan suspected that this was his old acquaintance, but he was a man. Ronan put forward the version that the old man has one more child that he does not know about. Maria could not stand such reasoning from Ronan, and she hit him in the face with all her might. Ronan, during the blow, appreciated her splash. It was a familiar feeling for him. Ronan was convinced that this was definitely the person. Count Maria St. Ronan had met her in a past life. When Ronan served in a place called Armarlin, Maria was in charge of supplies, with an excellent work ethic, easygoing character, able to find a common language with anyone. Maria was an impressive person. When the conversation came up among the guys about male genitals, Maria became sharply angry, and he started slapping people in the face to everyone. Then he was very curious about the reason for this. Ronan wanted to ask when they would meet again. Well, there was no more opportunity. After all, Maria died earlier than expected. It was very sad then. Ronan smiled and could not imagine that he would find the answer right here. He realized that Count Maria was a girl who in the future became a guy. Maria noticed Ronan's grin and asked if that wasn't enough for him. Maria saw that he continued to laugh and decided to hit him one more time. Ronan hit her on the head and told her to stop playing around. Ronan said that he simply allowed himself to be hit the first time. But this won't happen again. Maria hit him unexpectedly. It was a blow from the head. Ronan did not expect such a reception from her. They started pulling each other's hair. Maria asked what he would do in such a situation. Ronan replied that she was just sick. Father and Akel watched this from the side and were shocked by what was happening. Father and Ashol ran to stop them. After all, they were against violence. A little later, Ashley could not understand what happened to these two. After all, they were like a cat and a dog. They just fought as if they wanted to kill each other. Maria asked if they really just left it all to you. Ronan thoughtfully replied that there are such people. He asked the girl to examine her and tell her if they were okay. Ashel looked at them from the side and was shocked how they got along so quickly. After all, they recently fought to the death. Ronan looked at the swords and said that there were three balls and a magic wand left. Maria asked why they left them three blades. Wouldn't it be hard to carry them? Ronan replied that just in case. After all, he is rough in handling swords. Marina began to look at them. She said that they were very good. Well, this black iron sword is the best. Maria said that black iron is quite strong, so this thing is very useful and is sought after by even famous knights. She didn't know how rough he was with the sword. Well, this sword is unlikely to break. Ronan was surprised that this blade was made of black iron. Ronan recalled that in a past life, this was his favorite weapon. Maria said that, however, there is an excellent magic stone in this rod. Maria doubted whether to leave them this sword. Maria paid attention to the Achel. She noticed that he was a real cutie. Marin asked what kind of magic he uses. Ashel was a little embarrassed and answered that it was telekinesis. Maria was shocked, and she said that Achel is simply amazing. After all, if he shows himself well, who will be able to get a scholarship? Maria looked at Ronan and said that she would deal with him. She asked what technique he planned to show in the practical exam. Ronan was stunned by this question. He didn't think about it. Maria began to tell him that in order to enter the Philian, he must impress the professors in the practical exam by showing them his techniques. The girl pointed her finger at him and said that the theoretical exam was also difficult. It was practically incomparable. And so much so that it is enough to show yourself well in practice to get admitted. In other words, unless he shows his worth, he can forget about the academy. Ronan didn't understand why he should worry because a swordsman needs to show good fencing. The girl thought about it. She said that most martial artists and candidates show their personal combat techniques of mana. Ronan decided to ask again what kind of mana. Children who control the ball at this age can use mana, even without being magicians. Maria was surprised. She said that if this promising student is a Philion student, it's normal for you to be able to do this. First, he learns to feel his mana. The girl said that after studying mana, he begins to use it in battle. These are the basics. Maria was very surprised. She saw how Ronan's face changed, and it was funny that he couldn't feel Manu. Ronan asked the girl, isn't it like using an aura? Maria was shocked by this question. 
She held her face in shame and was shocked that Ronan was seriously planning to enter the Fillion Academy. The girl did not understand how it was possible to say that Aura and Mana were similar. How could he say something like that? Ronan said that he knows about it very well. He thought that the girl was making noise out of the blue. Maria got up from the table and said that she wouldn't do that. She ordered the guy to go outside. Ronan didn't understand why so suddenly. The girl took the dagger in her hands and asked to borrow it for a while. After all, she left her sword in the forge. Ronan was very angry for such impudence. He believed that it was very self-confident, and the girl could do harm at any moment. Maria told him not to worry. It would all end before it even began. Maria said, if anything happens to these swords, she will pay triple for them. The girl told him to stop talking. She would conduct a special training for him. Mom is the source of the power of nature. Like air, it is a natural energy that exists everywhere in the world. However, this does not mean that anyone can use it. To use mother, they must see and feel her within themselves and be able to use the sense of mana. But achieving this level is influenced by training, innate talent, and so on. Even personal motives can play a role. But in most cases, it takes a year to feel it. And promising Philion students have already passed this stage. After learning personal mana techniques, after everything, when they have studied mana, they enter the academy and they train their abilities. The girl told him to forget about feelings because he doesn't even know the difference between mana and aura. And he was about to enroll in Philion. They stood opposite each other. Maria thought it was pointless. Ronan, let's say that aura can be called a type of mana. Well, the difference between them is like between earth and sky. The girl said that even those whose talent has been dreamed of train for at least ten years, and only with frantic efforts do they barely master their innate power. This is aura. Ronan remembered the girl's words. From time to time, he met such fighters on the battlefield. They boasted to the aura users, you possessed unusual power. Ronan admitted that they were really strong. So it's quite surprising to find out how amazing this is. However, Ronan still defeated them. Having been cut down, they still died. The girl said it was time to finish explaining. She suggested starting a battle. Maria believed that she would convey everything faster if they used his body and not his head. Ronan was very surprised at how fast it was. Literally seconds passed before she found herself near his face. Ronan blocked her with blows. They looked into each other's eyes. Ronan looked at the girl. He was excited to test her strength and his strength. The guy was surprised when he saw that Maria had such power, even being so young. He also uses both daggers at once. Ronan couldn't see it, so he wasn't sure if it was a mana fighting style. Maria did not understand what was happening, because she planned to end the battle with one blow. The girl wanted to show the guy the full power of mana and make him give up the thought of enrolling, because I thought it was better this way than facing humiliation during an exam. But instead, Ronan presses her. This is the ability of someone who does not have mana. Ronan noticed that the girl was thinking and knocked the swords off her hands. Ronan could have finished off the girl right now, but he had mercy and stopped the sword near her head. The girl stole. She said that delay could cost her dearly. Maria said that even without taking into account mana, he is very good with a sword. The girl admitted that she has slight problems with her center of gravity. Ronan began to leave. And finally, he said that if the girl corrected her mistakes in battle, she would achieve more. Maria did not understand where he was going. Marina wanted to let him go and insisted that he return. The guy said that it doesn't matter because she just has to keep her word. The guy reminded that if the sword breaks, she will pay three times more for this sword. Ashel approached the girl from behind. He said that she had done an excellent job. After all, deep down in his soul, he understood her. The girl was shocked. She had only one question. Who are they? Ronan and Ashel came for the money. They were interested in the question of what she brought. The girl said that these were books. This is a collection of problems and notes on the Philian theoretical exam that the girl did. Maria began to put pressure on the patient because she knew that they needed these books to enter the exam. The guy asked why the girl was trying so hard. Ronan came closer to her and thought that the girl was trying to set them up. Maria spread her hands and told them not to worry. She just really liked them as people. The girl smiled because she provided this service for as long as she wanted them both to do, for free. Ashel was surprised at the girl's kindness. Maria began to say goodbye to them. She hit Ronan on the chest and told them to study hard for their own sake. After all, if they fail even after her books, the girl promised to remember them for this.
Ronan smiled and said that everything was clear to him. He advised the girl to think about herself. Maria was leaving and waved. They were supposed to see each other in the capital the day after the exam. So, Ronan's life after returning home, it was similar to before, well, little by little it began to change. He started eating a lot of food from his sister, although he used to complain a lot and was capricious about food. Irel said that her younger brother has a very good appetite, until his stomach tried to bring everything back. Filled with calories, he hunted monsters on the outskirts of the village, and I worked on increasing endurance and adaptability. It was already night. He killed a bunch of monsters and decided that that was enough for today. This continued until there were no more monsters around the village. And besides, he studied, which was incredible for a soldier. While studying, Ronan was very nervous, because he believed that half of this knowledge was simply not needed. I don't even know what this will give in the end. He gave it his all, and when the month was up, they finally reached the main stage of history. Valen, it was the capital. Very beautiful city. At its center is the best imperial educational institution. Small town in a white tower. Ashel was at a loss. He had never seen such large cities as Philion. Ronan didn't see the Achulis for a whole month. He noticed that the Achulian has grown a lot lately. Ronan came closer and hit the Achel. This was so that he would stop toiling around with nonsense. Ronan said that since they were already in the Philion, they could meet with one person. This was the swordmaster Shulafin. As a descendant of the Seven Grancias, a line of outstanding swordsmen. He is a genius who is considered the strongest of the Empire. Ronan thought that this guy should be his age, so they will probably meet him in the exam. Ashel asked Ronan if he had taken that thing. Ronan couldn't understand what he was talking about. Akel said that this is the feather of a dream bird when we rescued this bird more than a month ago. This pie should lead us to this bird. Ronan pulled out a feather from his pocket. He took this feather before leaving. Because I remembered that that old man lives in the capital. Ronan wanted to visit him after the exam. Well, this idea disappeared from his head. They looked at the building, and Peru led them to the top floor. At this time, the owner of the bird was writing books. It was very difficult for him, but he really enjoyed teaching. The owner of the bird was a lion. He loved animals very much. It was a professor of zoology, Varen Fanashir. Varen decided to open the window for ventilation, unless their savior comes today. Varen was about to open the window. Ronan was there. He made a scary face and said in a quiet voice that he hadn't even knocked, but they were already opening it for him. Varen was very frightened. He did not expect to see a man at the very top of the building. The owner of the bird began to wonder who he was, and how did he get here? Ronan began to clean his ear. His ear was clogged from the screams, so he advised that it was better to go up the stairs. Varen began to suspect them that they had come for Marpez, his bird. The guy took out a feather and said that this feather brought them here. Varen began to ask for forgiveness, because he behaved so indecently in front of the heroes. He asked them to forget this uncivilized moment. Ronan replied that everything was fine, and they did not hold grudges. Ronan began to blame Akel, because he considered him more to blame because he climbed onto the window. Akel did not understand his guilt, because it was Ronan who said that using stairs was too boring. Ronan covered his mouth with his hand so that he would talk less. Ronan started talking to the owner. He said that he imagined everything differently. To half-lion, a rare species of half-humans. I owned this bird, and he was a professor at the academy. Lev began to smile and said that he too was amazed. It turns out that our heroes were applicants. Leo thought that this was a real nuisance. After all, he would have prepared recommendations earlier. But the exam is today. Lev hoped that this would not happen, that they would not fail. Ronan said that everything was in order. Since they were here, he wanted to ask something. After all, they have little time. He took out an unusual object that looked like an egg. Ronan said that a bird dropped it on his hand. Valian looked closely and could not understand what it was. When Leo looked closely, it was the egg of a dream bird. The lion was shocked that his bird laid such an egg. Ronan asked what was wrong, because it is very surprising that dream birds lay eggs. The lion said that this is not just a bird, it is a dream bird. Either way, it was amazing to see. Valian had no idea who would hatch from him. Ronan asked how this was possible. The lion began to say that this is a bird's egg, then a bird should hatch. But dream birds are different. Depending on the environment, dream birds will absorb unique mana and lay an egg. If there was lava there, a phoenix shrouded in flames will hatch. 
If the lair is a monster, that bird will copy its appearance and so on. There are even conditions in which what emerges from the egg is not a bird at all. Leo said that he could analyze the Manu emanating from the egg. That is, the chance that he will be able to predict what shape the dream bird will take after hatching. Leo began to feel Manu like molten metal flowing completely chaotically. Leo said that right now it's very difficult for me to say who is in this egg. Ronan was shocked that the bodice attaches such importance to some egg. Leo asked if they could look after the egg. Ronan replied that it was not difficult for him, and he would do everything as expected. Ronan asked if this would suit Lev. After all, this egg is valuable. Lev replied that of course it was valuable. Dream birds lay only one egg in their entire lives. He smiled and said once it happened, right in the presence of the heroes. He thought that Marpez felt something special. Leo began to respect the decision of his friend, with whom he spent so much time. Therefore, Lev decided to leave this egg to them. Ronan replied that this suited him completely. Besides, it's interesting to see what comes out of it. Ronan got up from behind the sofa. He said that time was running out, and they did everything they wanted. Leo asked them to wait some more time. He began to look for some things and kept thinking about what to give them. I just had a great idea. He handed them a map and asked them to take it. This will help them when the egg hatches. Somewhat later, hall for practical exam. The main building of the castle is Galilean. A lot of people had gathered. It was the waiting room for incoming martial artists. The man called everyone one by one. Each person had his own numbering. Ronan couldn't wait for his turn. He was angry that they were making him wait so long. Ronan asked Maria, she doesn't think we have to wait for a very long time. Maria replied that this happens in all exams. Maria said that she paid special attention to this exam. Filion is a private academy that all aristocrats attend. They may become important clients later, so she shouldn't look bad. Maria thought that in any case, it would be better if Akel sat next to them. Ronan replied that nothing could be done about it. The examination hall for magicians is somewhere else. Finally, the time has come for Ronan. The girl advised him not to be afraid and to show him everything he was capable of. Maria promised if he failed, she would kill him. Ronan thanked her for her sincere support. He entered the hall. There were five people in front of him. These were academy professors. The guy looked at them and said that they looked very unusual. But among them, that old man in the middle. This is the head of the academy, the Archmage. This woman is also impressive. In his previous life, Ronan had rarely encountered such energy. This woman was a fencing instructor of a great sword saint. Ronan bowed and greeted the jury. Grandfather named Krava greeted him. Answer. He was pleased to meet the fighter. He said that the guy will fight with a magical dummy. To demonstrate his technique, Ronan replied that yes, well, there was nothing special about it. Ronan began to take out his sword. He said that it would be a regular cut with a sword. The jury found this unusual. One of the jury considered a simple cut without a drop of mana to be unusual. One of the jury said that this always happens. Who judges a magical mannequin by its appearance and says such nonsense? Another jury told him that if this was the applicant from a remote village, then he could not know. Even looks like this, the mannequin is able to resist aura thanks to its defensive skill and has high regeneration. This product is advanced magical engineering. The jury continued to laugh, and even the so-called genius Shulafin could barely leave a trace of KMK. They were interested in what this ordinary guy wanted to show. Grandfather thought that these people were very rude, even when they were in front of them. Grandfather hoped that this child would prove the rest of the jury wrong. He looked at Ronan. He wondered where he got such powerful energy at such a young age. Ronan needed one blow to cut off the head of this dummy. The instructor, Nabiroza, was shocked. She had never seen this in such a life. Grandfather was shocked. In his many years, he had not seen that a magic mannequin was cut so easily. Instructor Nabiroza attacked Ronan. Her sword was near his neck. Ronan remained calm. Nabiroza asked who he was. After all, it was fencing, and it was interesting who taught him this.